Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another shrink plastic shaker card video. I just can't help myself, I'm just in the mood to make these, so there's probably going to be a few more coming up before I get this out of my system. Today's card was super easy, and I keep joking that it took me three days to make, but that's only because I kept getting interrupted. So even I'm going to be amazed at how quickly this comes together in this video. So to start off, I used some white cardstock, some window sheet or acetate, depending on where you're from, a white card base, some kids craft foam, and today I'm using this adorable little stamp set, the You Color My World by Lawn Fawn. It's a bit of an older set and I know a lot of people have it, so you might already have this one in your craft stash, but for me it's pretty new because I grabbed it not long ago. So to get started, I'm simply cutting out a rectangle in the middle of my white cardstock. I do this just by measuring about a centimetre from all of the edges to get a rectangle, and then it's just a matter of cutting out the hole in the middle. I do this with a craft knife and a ruler. To give me lots of dimension today, I'm using two layers of Kids Adhesive Craft Foam. I always do two layers when I'm working with shrink plastic, just because it is really on the thicker side. Even though they shrink down to these cute little things, they're super thick and they need a lot of room to move around. You especially don't want them to get stuck on top of each other and not have enough room to move, because then they're going to be stuck forever. So because I'm doing a big frame of all the crayons around this one, I didn't need to put my window sheet on the back, which is lucky because I forgot to do it again. I just have a habit of forgetting to stick this stuff down. So I'm going to be sticking it on the front. And all of this is going to be hidden by my crayons a bit later. I then got on to stamping out my images. I was really excited to use this ink for the first time, but I think I've done something wrong and I would love your help if you could comment below. Is this ink the kind of ink that I'm after, or have I made a mistake by buying this one? I stamped out all of my little crayons, and just like always when I stamp out a whole bunch of things, I'll go back and typically colour in the first ones that I stamped while the rest is drying. Not that inks typically need a long time to dry before I colour them in. I was using my Copics as per usual, and this happened. The second I started colouring in with my yellow Copic, this ink smudged. It just wouldn't stop. <laughs> it was all over my yellow Copic. It was spreading all over the image. I looked at the ink to see if it said that it wasn't good for using with alcohol markers. But I've just, I've never, never had this problem before. And so now I'm showing my old ink. This is an Impress ink. Um, I, I literally do not think that these are made anymore. I remember my mum using this exact <laughs> ink pad when I was younger. It's definitely wearing out and running out of ink, but it has just powered through everything. And I'm pretty sure it was made before Copics were even thought of as something that you wouldn't use for card making. So it really surprises me that that ink has never failed me, yet this nice new one that I had bought just smudged everywhere. So let me know in the comments, is this the wrong ink for this kind of coloring? Have you ever had problems with this ink? And although it is black, or I think it might say jet black, it stamps, it's a blue black. I know that might be picky, but I'm very picky with my black inks. I like true jet black inks. I don't like the ones that have red tones or blue tones to them. So it was really surprising that it was like the blackest navy blue I'd ever seen. And then it smudged everywhere. So I may just be having a moment and have bought the wrong thing, which is okay. You can always try to grab another ink another time and keep using my older ones until there is literally none of them left. Hopefully someone will know why this happened. So here I am just colouring in, same as always, using two Copics, a light one, a dark one, and then blending them together. Once all of these were cut out, I cut them out by hand too. I didn't grab the matching die for this one. It wasn't too bad. You just usually throw something on YouTube or Netflix and sit and cut everything out. But once they were done, it was then time to assemble my frame. 
I did end up coloring and cutting a few extra crayons as I was maybe one or two short and I wanted some extra colors in there like the blue green and the pink but that didn't really take very long and then before I knew it this little frame had come together really nicely. Now on to my favorite part. I love using shrimp plastic at the moment. It is just so much fun. I love making custom shaker elements. There is just something so unique about cards when you do this. So as you can see, I have stamped a whole bunch of these same crayons and I'm going to very simply color them in. I don't feel the need to do shading or anything like that when it comes to my shaker elements. They're going to shrink down so they probably wouldn't even be noticed. I feel like just the fact that they are there, that they are miniature, that they are cute and chunky, that is more than enough excitement over these little things without having to go super detailed. So once they were all colored in, it was then time to get shrinking. I'm probably going to leave all the footage in this again, just because I don't know, I just find it really therapeutic to watch this stuff shrink down. I especially love that this first crayon that I'm doing is purple and you can't really tell because the color is so light when it's big but then when it shrinks down you can see that it's a different color. Anyway, I will leave you with some music as I do all of this. For my sentiment today, I have used my Coles ABC dies to spell out the word color. I was originally going to use the stamp and maybe stamp it on like a stitched scallop circle and have that in the middle of the window. Being Aussie, we don't spell color this way. So I thought it would be fun to enlarge one of the words with some alphabet dies, which I always forget is just a cool way to make sentiments look even more amazing. So here I am just coloring in the letters for color in some rainbow colors and this is going to be stuck down on the front. So to finish off my sentiment, I'm going to be stamping the U and my world. And I'm stamping them both on the same banner that I have cut from some white cardstock. I'm then going to trim these down with that die again, and they are going to go above and below my already colored letters. So here I am sticking all of that together.
I have seen a lot of people coloring in shrink plastic with pencils and that gives you a really opaque look. But because I'm doing Copics, I still have a really transparent image in the end after they have shrunk down. So I find it's really important to have either a white or really light background behind these images so that you can see all of their individual colors. I am doing some flecks of my rainbow watercolor pigments all over the background. These won't ruin the color of those little shaker elements. This actually looked really cute as it was as well. If you didn't want to turn this into a shaker card and you just wanted something that had a bit of dimension, a window through to that rainbow splatter, and a really cute sentiment, then I feel like you could probably finish the card right now. But that's just not what we're going for today. So here I am adding all of my shaker elements, all of those adorable crayons, and a bunch of sequins that I have picked out of a bunch of different mixes in rainbow colors so that it all ties together. I then added some PVA glue onto my craft foam and then I very carefully stuck this down. I'm going to leave a packet of Copics on top just so that it's got a bit of weight to it to ensure everything adheres nicely together. And here I am the next morning because again got distracted <laughs> giving it its first shake. And as you can see nothing is sticking. Everything looks great. It makes the best sound when I shake this. There are so many chunky pieces in there. And there we have it. This card is complete. If you liked today's tutorial and would like to see me do more shaker cards and shrink plastic cards in the future, then please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you can come back and watch them when I make them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.